It is one of the most common, yet also one of the most perplexing sleep disorders that exists. Insomnia. At any given time, it can affect around 10% of the world's population, causing countless hours of lost sleep and wakeful anguish. But why does it happen? And how does one overcome it? Stay tuned to find out. Naturally, we fall asleep at night. It is how the human body reacts to exhaustion, and a part of the innate biological rhythm that our species has maintained for thousands of years. Yet, nearly 30 million Americans suffer from at least a mild form of insomnia that causes them to have difficulty falling asleep when they want to, and which subsequently leads to the suffering of fatigue and drowsiness during the daytime. And during their nights, Sufferers of insomnia experience a whole other set of troubles and pains which add to their woes. What time is it right now? Quite often, during the late hours of the night, an insomniac's mind will race with activity. Tomorrow's gonna be a big day. Better get some sleep. Ugh, it's too quiet here. I can hear myself breathe. Why do I feel like I'm forgetting something? And inconveniently enough, many of their thoughts will be the ones that induce the most anxiety, depression, and stress, making it quite a challenge for the individual to find any relaxation right before bed. This is ridiculous. There may be a variety of different reasons which cause these thoughts to become so prominent at night, but once they begin, they become very difficult for insomniacs to suppress. And to make matters worse, some sufferers will also experience irritability, discomfort, or even pain after lying awake in bed for a while. Many who experience persistent insomnia crave for regular sleep schedules and the ability to fall asleep comfortably and to wake up refreshed. But falling into such routines without relying on sleeping pills or other drugs can be a tenacious problem that each individual must find their own unique solution to. For instance, distractions such as television, books, or computers could potentially stimulate the mind and keep the individual awake for much longer than they desire. Or conversely, they could actually distract the mind for just long enough from all the thoughts that are keeping the individual awake. It really depends on the person. The most important thing is to figure out what works for you. And the best way to do that is to experiment. If you suffer from insomnia, Finding out what triggers your brain to send signals to the rest of your body to nod off is the key to overcoming this disorder. For some, getting out of bed to do something relaxing, such as drinking a warm beverage or reading a book, can be more helpful than simply lying awake in bed. For others, listening to music or watching a familiar TV show can do the trick. It also helps to be mindful of what environmental conditions are preferable and conducive to you falling asleep, such as the amount of light in the room, how noisy it is during sleep hours, and the room's temperature. And it really helps to move all clocks out of plain view, as this effectively alleviates the anxiety associated with watching the night hours tick away. The activities that you engage in before bedtime could also have an effect on how quickly you'll be able to fall asleep. Some general things to avoid are late night heavy meals, vigorous exercise, and work-related tasks that might cause stress. Suffice it to say, Big discussions or arguments should also be avoided right before bedtime. And all of these stress-inducing activities should be replaced by more soothing ones in low lighting conditions and viable. This will generally prime the mind and the body for sleep long before it is time to actually fall asleep. And as for screens such as televisions, smartphones, and tablets, well, research has shown that the light emitted from these screens tends to suppress the body's production of melatonin. And that can severely disrupt sleep patterns. But if you find that watching something helps, then it might be a good idea to stick with what works and perhaps just set things so that these screens are turned off afterwards. So that's it for part two of our 12 part series on disturbing sleep disorders. Insomnia is a widespread condition with different solutions for different people. So to continue the conversation, please feel free to comment below with your own experiences on the subject. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, Good night and sleep tight.